Welcome to my Oprah's Favorite Things episode. Okay, okay, I'm not actually Oprah, but this is a Favorite Things video. This is a video all about tech products and tech accessories that have been helpful, that I have found useful throughout this year. Now, they're, they're not things that have necessarily came out this year, but they are things that I have found to be helpful this year, which I think is more helpful. How many times can I say helpful? I'm gonna put links to everything in the description below, and my thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm kind of cheating because this isn't a tech product or tech accessory. It holds tech products and tech accessories, but this is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack, uh, specifically the 30 liter version. I really like bags, backpacks, messenger bags, whatever. I love anything that allows me to put stuff inside of it and organize it. That just like hits a spot part of my brain that just gives it, oh, I, I just love that stuff. But ever since I got this everyday backpack, I haven't bought another messenger bag, backpack, whatever. This one bag has solved all of my backpack travel needs. It's, it's literally the perfect bag for me. Now, this backpack is definitely designed to be a camera bag. It's definitely thought of as a camera bag first, but what's cool about it is it's not necessarily a camera bag. A lot of camera bags have these massive compartments that are specialized for cameras and camera gear, uh, but what makes this backpack really interesting and gives me something that I want to talk about on here because I don't talk about camera gear, uh, is it's modular and you can make it fit just about anything you want. So what I like about this backpack is if I do want to load up all my camera gear, I can fit it all in there. Or say I'm just taking a day trip or an overnight or a weekend trip someplace and I don't want to bring my camera gear, I can take the bag and reorganize it so I can fit in clothes and toiletries and all that stuff. It's completely modular. It has the shelf design and what's cool about these shelves is you can either take them out or rearrange them so you can move them up. It's just a Velcro system, so you can move them around in the bag however you want, take them out, or you can modify them by like folding up certain sides. It's really cool, it's really interesting. There's also just a lot of like hidden features and just a lot of really nice touches about this bag that I absolutely love it. The main compartment of this bag can be accessed from the sides or from the top, so you can get at your stuff however you end up doing the shelf system if you use that. Again, you could just take all those shelves out if you don't want them, if you just wanna stuff clothes in your bag or something like that, you could do that. There's also a laptop and tablet compartment. Uh, there is two separate slides in there, so if you have both an iPad and a laptop, you can fit them both in there. Honestly, I just take my 12.9 inch iPad Pro and put it in there plenty of space. There's also a nice little compartment at the top of the laptop sleeve for like knickknacks. Like I throw my AirPods, I keep a flashlight in there and stuff like that. It's just, it's just a nice little compartment for little things that can get lost in your bag. One of my favorite touches about this bag is I mentioned the side compartments open up, but on the sides, you can unzip the sides and there's little sleeves in there for cables and other like tech accessories. So all the hubs, external batteries, cables, chargers, all that stuff that a lot of people get like a secondary tech pouch for. I just put in these side pockets right here so I don't need to put in another like bag in a bag kind of thing. I don't really care for those uh, like tech pouches and stuff like that that you have a bag and you need to put it into another bag. It's just, I don't like those. So I like the side compartment system so I can just put all that stuff there. I can't stress how much storage is in this backpack. It, it just fits all of my needs in every situation, whether it's an overnight trip, weekend trip, day trip. Uh, I'm just going on like a photography mission up to Yosemite. I, I'm going to the park to film something, whatever. Like, like whatever it is, this bag has been the one bag to rule them all. And yes, that's a Lord of the Rings reference. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service and it's the best VPN service I've used. And I know VPN ads are a dime a dozen on YouTube, but as a former network admin, I really know what I'm talking about when it comes to VPNs. And Surfshark has been my absolute favorite. I've probably tried at least a dozen, if not more. It's extremely easy to snoop on people's internet traffic in public places like coffee shops. You're on a shared Wi-Fi connection and it's really easy to see what other people are doing. But a VPN helps protect your personal information from that kind of snooping. With Surfshark, you get a fast and reliable VPN connection with an unlimited amount of devices. There is no device cap when using Surfshark. You can also choose where to connect, meaning you can prioritize a faster connection speed 
or if you want to connect to another country and see what other streaming services have to offer in different regions. I highly recommend Surfshark. You can get 83% off and an extra four months for free by using code LOLLY at checkout. I will also put a link in the description below so you can just click on that, make it easy. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. All right, next up is this Anchor charger right here. Now, full disclosure, Anchor is sponsoring either an upcoming video or they just sponsored a previous video. I'm not entirely sure how these videos will be released but I just want to disclose that it has nothing to do with this charger. I've been using this charger for years now, uh, it, completely separate, but the timing just happened to work out and I just want to disclose that. This is a 60 watt dual USB-C charger. So it has two USB-C ports, 60 watts overall. So if you plug in one thing to one of these USB ports, it can charge it up to 60 watts. Now, if the device doesn't take 60 watts, it'll cap it at whatever the device does. Um, but if it goes up to 60 watts, say like the MacBook Air or something like that, you could charge it with this. But if you plug in a second thing, they both drop down to 30 watts because this is just a 60 watt charger. So both ports drop down to 30 watts, which is more than enough to fast charge like an iPad and an iPhone at the same time. This is like the ultimate travel charger. It's not very big. Here, here's the iPhone Pro Max for size comparison. Not very big at all. So it doesn't take up a ton of space in your bag. You can charge two things. This is the only charger I carry with me when I travel. This, is, this lives in my backpack. Speaking of charging really quick, braided cables. I swapped out just about every cable I can with a braided version of that cable. They are just so much nicer. They last longer. They're better quality cables. I absolutely love braided cables. So OWC sent me their external drive. This is the Envoy Pro FX a few months ago, and I really like this. This has been the best external drive I've used because it is just it's bonkers fast. It is it is incredibly fast. It's Thunderbolt, but it also does regular USB-C and it comes with a USB-A adapter so you can plug it into a USB-A computer as well. Uh, I, I also mentioned in my last video how I've been using Final Cut a bit more for bigger projects. I had some weird issues with LumaFusion. Uh, I've been using this to edit videos off of because my Mac mini here only has one terabyte of storage and I've completely ran out of space on that. So I've been using this just for video projects lately and I didn't notice a difference in speed between using the internal drive on the Mac mini and this. It's just how fast this is. It's really great. My only complaint about this is in order to set it up, you have to run software that comes on this. So that means you have to either use a Mac or a PC to set this up. So if you're somebody that works just from an iPad, you're gonna have to borrow somebody's Mac. But if you're looking for a stupid fast external drive, I highly recommend the OWC Envoy Pro FX. Okay, so the next one's probably not surprising, but I absolutely love them, and that's AirPods. I probably don't even need to mention them in this video. I've talked about them a lot. Of course, they're my favorite things, but they have been so helpful this year. Now, I have two different kinds. I have the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max. The AirPods Max have become my desk headphones. These are the headphones that I play music on when I'm writing or doing admin tasks, or I'm uh, playing back and editing video. I'll use that lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack cable so I get like no latency. They're great for that, but they are heavy and big. So when I put them in my backpack, they take up a ton of space. So honestly, these just sit on my desk. I don't take these with me anywhere. The AirPods Pro are my everything but the desk headphones. So if I'm cleaning around the house, if I'm going out on a walk or a run, if I'm traveling, whatever, I'm using these instead. Now I find the AirPods Max to be a lot more comfortable to wear for a long period of time. They have these nice padded cushions. They go over your ears, not in your ears. They are a lot more comfortable to wear for long periods of time. That's why I wear these at my desk. The AirPods Pro are fine for a long period of time. With the tips that they ship with, I noticed I couldn't really wear them for more than an hour. I replaced the tips with the Charge and Active Foam tips. They sent me a pair to try out a long time ago, but I've since been buying my own. Uh, and I really like them, they're really comfortable. Basically they're foam on the inside, so they're a lot more comfortable to wear, but they're silicone on the outside. So that way like ear gunk and grossness doesn't get into the foam and they just last longer than normal foam tips. I found I had to replace these after about six months. The 
the tips themselves, not the AirPods. I had to replace them after about six months, but they're not very expensive, and the comfort that I get out of them is worth the cost. It's, it's totally worth it to me. I'm somebody that really likes having music or background noise always happening, so I'm always either wearing the AirPods Max or the AirPods Pro. Um, I don't like sitting in silence. It makes me uncomfortable for some reason, so I always have headphones on in some way. And kind of the side benefit of having two different versions, and I'm not advocating for having two separate versions of AirPods because it's kind of ridiculous, but if one are dead, like right now the AirPods Max are dead, I just throw in the AirPods Pro while these charge up. That's kind of nice. But I, again, I don't advocate for having two. In fact, if I was only able to have one, I think I would just go AirPods Pro because of the size factor, how convenient they are to travel with and walk around with. These are just heavy and bulky. These are really nice. I could throw them on my MagSafe charger that I either have on my desk or on my bedside table. I could just throw them on there, let them charge up. Um, they're just, they're just really nice to have, and they're a lot cheaper too. Next up is the BenQ PD3220U. BenQ sent me this monitor a while ago to review, and I ended up doing a whole desk setup video around that. I'll put links to that and everything that I mentioned in the description below. And I really like the monitor, and I but I had to stop using it for a little while because I broke the monitor that I was using for filming, and that was actually the only monitor I had for HDMI. But I finally got around to replacing all that, so that is back on my desk now. And what's great about it is, uh, like I mentioned, I've been having to do a lot of video editing on my Mac Mini lately. Mac Mini could take full advantage of an external monitor, unlike the iPad. So I get a nice big display, 4K resolution. It's color calibrated, but it comes with a bunch of different profiles. So uh, I was working on some HDR video stuff. So I was just kind of playing around with it. So I was able to swap the, the out the color calibration for the proper HDR spec, so I could see everything you know properly color graded and all that stuff. It's a really good monitor if you do any kind of creative work that you need to make sure you have color accuracy and things like that, or if you just want a really big 4K monitor that looks good, it's also good for that as well. One of its inputs is Thunderbolt. So what I have is one Thunderbolt cable coming out of it that I can either plug into my Mac mini or plug into my iPad. That way I can jump back and forth uh, the different computers that I use so I'm not just stuck using the Mac Mini at my desk or I'm just stuck using the iPad at my desk. I can jump back and forth between the two. My only complaint about this monitor is it's not very bright. It's only about 250 nits, which is about half the brightness of my LG Ultrafine monitor. I think at max brightness it gets 300 nits if you're doing HDR stuff, but like UI elements and stuff in Mac OS or iPad OS aren't in HDR. So you're really getting about 250 nits. It's not super bright, so if I have my window open and like right around 11 to noon, I have to close that window, close up the blinds because it gets to be, the backlighting gets to be too bright and it starts to become hard to see that monitor. But overall, I really like the monitor. It's been super great. Uh, it's, it's really nice having a really big canvas to edit video in. Um, I, I highly recommend it, again, if you do creative work. One of my all-time favorite tech products is the Code Mechanical Keyboard. I've had this thing for years now. Uh, I think this was the first keyboard I ever reviewed on this channel, maybe? I don't, I, I, I think so. Channels actually, uh, by the time this video's out, the channel has just turned five years old, so. I, I've been doing this for a little while now. But this is a mechanical keyboard from a company called WASD. It uses the Cherry MX Blue switches, so you can get that. Nice clickety sound, that's the last time I do it. If you don't like that sound, I promise that is the last time I'll do it. I'll, in fact, I will put the keyboard down, putting it down. No more clicking, I promise. But I really like this keyboard. I like that clickety clackety sound. I like the feel of it. But if you've never tried a mechanical keyboard before, I will put a link in the description below. There's uh, this thing on Amazon that you can get that has a bunch of different kind of key feels. And you, you can literally just sit there and click on the keys and it has all these different colored mechanical key switches so they have different feels and make different sounds and stuff like that. It's kind of a fun fidget toy to be honest. Um, so I'll put that there if you've never tried a mechanical keyboard. It's not very much. but. Um, I like mechanical keyboards. Obviously, I'm somebody that types a lot. I type thousands of words for scripts and outlines. Uh, for this outline alone, I typed 1,500 words all using this keyboard. 
I really like it. In fact, I used it so much, I wore off the texture of the keycaps, the original keycaps. Now, this is an older version of the Code Mechanical keyboard. This is uh, version 2B. They're on version 3 now. Um, and they changed the coating of the keycaps so it doesn't wear off anymore. Uh, but what I ended up doing is I ordered keycap replacements from their website and you can get custom design ones. So I set it up so that the, the letter and number keys and spacebar were white, the modifier keys, function row, all that stuff were gray, and then escape and arrow keys were red. And I really liked the way that turned out. Okay, so this is another thing I've mentioned a lot during the pandemic, but it's the Lamical laptop stand. This was like my first pandemic purchase. Like, I was like, okay, I need to be able to have my work stuff here and my video editing stuff here. So I ended up like redoing my whole desk setup around having like swapping things around depending on what mode I'm in. But I wanted to have my iPad at an ergonomic height when using it. And I found this. What's cool about it is it adjusts vertically, but it also adjusts tilt wise too and rotate as well. A lot of laptop stands do not look good, um, but that one with the aluminum and stuff like that, if you have Apple computers, it's going to match those Apple computers. So that's it for this video. I will put links to everything in the description below. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Have a great day.